We should have known that Star Wars would eventually result in the downfall of civilization through toxic fandom on social media the second we saw that opening of the first movie, and it had four dots in the ellipsis. The signs were all there from the beginning. Also, starting your Star Wars property with this line, but not going directly into John Williams' incredible opening theme in a nonsense positional text crawl. Giving us this much of this lightsaber battle without even the slightest hint of any fate stooling in the background score. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! Look, we all make mistakes, but including this in your previously on the prequel sections really feels like doubling down on what is either a f*** you to the abilities of the Jedi or a f*** you to valid criticism. I actually kind of respect the latter, and there's nothing I like more than sinning things I respect. Also, I almost want to remove a sin for Disney giving us a four minute recap to save us from having to go back and rewatch three decidedly average movies. But it turns out even this small snippet of a compilation was enough to make me rageful about all the missed opportunities. And of course, Jar Jar Binks. Being a Jedi and only just now realizing your Jedi yoga class is under attack. Opening with the execution of Order 66 is a super bold and dark way to start the show, and I'm kind of here for it. Looks like this show's starting off strong and really setting the tone for what will surely be an action-packed and well-paced series. Cindy's about to add us in, aren't they? What do we do now? We run. Don't worry, you're safe. You've got plot armor. What else would explain why there are all of a sudden no backup troopers on this bridge and still dozens below? Also, if this is the entirety of the troop that stormed in here, how were these Jedi overrun? I'd put the average Jedi at least a 10 to 1 advantage on troopers whose defining characteristic is their incompetence. There are at least 10 Jedi in this giant room and at most 30 stormies. Star Wars show starts on Tatooine cliche. Honestly, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if we spend most of Andor here too. Parking your ship in the middle of the road. Scene does not contain a Jason Isaacs. You know who we are. I only mention it so that you'll say it out loud so the audience who didn't watch Star Wars Rebels will also know who we are. Oh, and by the way, I'm following it up with a question about what we do, just so we can squeeze as much forced exposition out of you as possible. Now if he were smart, he'd keep moving, but the Jedi Code is like an itch. I mean, sure, but you can hide an itch. Look, I'm just saying Jedi can still do good things under the radar and be careful enough not to get caught. You don't have to be my cousin Lance and splay your legs and go crotch digging every time you get an itch. There. Case in point, Uncut Gems here could have simply stopped that knife and let it fall, but for some reason decides to control hover it there for a good four seconds so that he can be spotted. Here's an idea, Mr. Inquisitor, sir. Instead of force pushing the person you aren't trying to apprehend and put them off balance, maybe force push the one that you are? Oh no, however will they chase him through these impenetrable rods and fabric? Are Jedi dumb now? I feel like Jedi are dumb now. Also, this somehow works to deter them from giving full chase. Is everyone dumb now? I feel like everyone's dumb now. If you really want to make the most of the shade provided by this dead sand thing, wouldn't building along its side as close as possible be a better option than building outwards? This makes even more sense as we learn they're scavenging food from it. The fact that this slacker still has a job. Look at him, he's barely moving the knife. Also, this is the most unsanitary meat processing plant to ever unsanitary. They're basically processing meat directly from this erode kill in the hot sun with sand everywhere. And this slacker isn't even wearing a hairnet. Considering we're about to find out this greedy corporation cut the workers' wages in half without even telling them, how does this asshole company pinching pennies that tightly let Obi-Wan just casually get away with pocketing a portion of their daily output in plain sight? Honestly, it's not just that I'm sick of this planet. I'm sick of the way every show on this planet thinks I want to see more grandiose Lawrence of Kenobia traveling sand porn. So why Scholar once said, I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And Star Wars cinematographers use it everywhere. Ever since Ray bubbled some up a few years ago, I've lamented that magic stew isn't a real thing. And now this show continues that trauma by rubbing it in my face after I'd almost gotten over it. Either invent magic stew or take it out of your content. I can only handle so much disappointment. No lies. I've been waiting 17 years to hear Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan again, and the first thing you have him say is a character tells another character they're late even though it doesn't impact the plot at all, cliche? If his next line is, you'd better come take a look at this, I'm shutting this channel down. Do you have it? Whew, that was close. That is still pronoun gaming, so I do need to add another sin. Here we see Obi-Wan buying the toy we'll see Luke playing with in the original Star Wars, which is cute and all, but this episode will pile on callback after callback after... Wait, call forward? Call concurrent? Call it what you want when you're doing it this much, you're getting us in? Tika, if you're going to steal my parts and then sell them back to me, could you at least clean them first? 
as a courtesy. Jawas are deceitful little thieves? This is brand new information. I wonder if this is ground that's been covered before in the movies. The Mandalorian, the Book of Boba Fett, the video games, the novels, Star Wars Rebels, Star Wars Clone Wars. Star Wars. Dreaming in realistic and picture-perfect flashbacks. Dreams aren't usually replay videos, they're impressionistic surrealism sleep theater with vague plot points. At the very least, Anakin should have hot dog fingers. Just when you thought I might be kidding about the sand porn, the show goes hardcore with yet another desert travel montage. If you listen closely in the background, you can hear the DP moaning in ecstasy about grainy beige and saying things like, show me the vast expanse of your badlands, baby. Obi, how's the peeping? How's the peeping, Obi? No, Obi, Obi, Obi. They're hunting me. You have to help me. This whole interaction seems silly to me. Why would Nari seek out Obi-Wan like this if he knew he was being hunted? What did he honestly think Obi-Wan could do for him right now? Why would Obi-Wan even stick around for this conversation out in the open? Does no one on this cloak and saber show know how to clandestine correctly? What about the people that need us? What about the fight? The fight is done. We lost. As understandable as it is, I have to admit that Moody Mopey giving up on the Galaxy Kenobi is my least favorite flavor of Kenobi. At least they're getting the retired hero is disillusion stuff out of the way so we can see our beloved Obi-Wan swinging in full force from episode two, right? We're going to be late. Two character accuses another character of being late cliches in the span of 20 minutes. That's actually kind of impressive. I hope the rest of the show is just a series of characters telling other characters they're late until at the very end where Gandalf shows up precisely when he means to. She's either in the cellar, in the kitchen, or in the woods. This must be the lamest palace ever if these are the three best options for a 10 year old to run off to for fun. Also, if Leia's pulling this sh so often, wouldn't it be smart to put some sort of surreptitious tracking device inside of her Lola droid? <laughs> nah, who am I kidding? Who would be smart enough to do that? Pleasure barge, boring. I think Star Wars may have learned the wrong lesson from The Mandalorian. Since Baby Yoda was such a hit, now they want to give us Baby Leia, and then also give Baby Leia a Baby R2. I guess if they think we overload on cute, we won't notice the terrible dialogue and plot progression of this forced narrative. Sorry, SW. We noticed. It is like raising a glory. Star Wars character is insulted by being compared to a creature that I've never heard of, therefore giving me no context as to the nature of the insult. Cliché. No Lola for the rest of the day. But she didn't do anything. Yeah, well, neither did my PC when I got stuck trying to beat Darth Maul on the Phantom Menace video game. But that didn't stop my mom from turning it off after three days of not seeing me and saying something about my night terrors keeping her up. I may have some unresolved issues there. If you behaved as well as you climb, you'd be a senator already. Senators with the maturity of a 10-year-old. In other words, senators. You know an episode of a sci-fi show is paced poorly when I have to wonder if I'm in a repeating time loop story. When the time comes, he must be trained. Like you trained his father. Until this point, it was generally accepted that Anakin was the recipient of the worst burn in the franchise. Also, why is Obi-Wan so keen to train Luke but refuses to help the existing Jedi that are actually begging him for help? You know why we are here. But I'll restate it to you again in case the audience has forgotten in the last 20 minutes since we expositioned it to them the first time. We're not under the Empire's- <laughs> Hear that split second scream? That's all we're gonna hear from the now handless backtalker for the rest of the scene. We won't see her, hear her, or have any idea what happened after she got her entire hand lasered off. On one hand, you might think this is strange, considering most people who traumatically lose an extremity would still be screaming in severe pain somewhere. But on the other hand, there is no other hand. Moses Ingram is great in this episode, and I'm taking off three sins just to spite the racist, hateful morons who think that being a fan means aggressively bullying anyone who doesn't fit your shallow, insignificant definition of the thing you pretend to love. Grow up, live love, pursue healthy fandom, you troglodytes. Save this for me. This scene would feel far tenser, and Reva's threats would carry far more weight if I didn't already know that this character survives. Another show falls victim to a bad case of prequelitis. We spent the last 10 years looking for him. Maybe you've been looking in the wrong places. Well, yes, as evidenced by the whole not finding him yet. Be careful, third sister. The plot summary of most of the episodes of the Brady Bunch somehow makes it into the episode. Probably scouring for pirates. That's what I said. Don't encourage her. There are some points in this episode where I swear the writer's goal was to sound like every trope from every bad sitcom in the history of the galaxy. We're really playing the kid acts out, but the dad's into it, and the mom has to play the heavy and be the only adult in the room card right now. You don't need manners when you're talking to a lower life form. Then I guess I don't need manners when I'm talking to you. Are we supposed to side with Leia here because we know she turns out to be Carrie Fisher someday? Because it could be argued she's being the bigger nerf herder here. He calls into question her kindness towards droids and she immediately goes full force into a personal attack. Not even a real look on her. 
Whoa, adult kneeling to be on the same level as a child for a heart to heart alert. Automatic skip commencing. One day this planet will look to you, Leia. And you will look back to it. Well, at least to the remaining pieces you can still see drifting off into space. <laughs> Good talk. Why are you here? Disney's incessant need for extremely strange cameos. Just waiting. For what? For you. <laughs> that may be the lamest attempt at making a chase seem real in the history of filmmaking. Run that back in slow motion, will you? Not only does Flea get caught needlessly monologuing, but watch this guy. He's there to catch this girl, and she gets a full five steps in before he starts half-heartedly jogging after her. And you thought stormtroopers were idiots. And it just keeps getting worse. As if the slow escape wasn't enough, watch again as these mercenaries continue being bested by a 10 year old running through some light foliage and pondering the complexities of navigating a small tree branch accompanied of course by a force load of sins what about the senate we cannot let this become public it would draw too much attention well then, maybe leaving her with such an influential family wasn't the best idea to begin with? You can't hide the daughter of Vader as the princess of an entire planet and also complain that telling the Senate she's been kidnapped will draw too much attention to who she really is. You can't have it both ways, fictional TV show. I won't have it. We your guard then, or a bounty hunter. Only you know how important she really is, Obi-Wan. Isn't that the beauty of bounty hunters? The whole point is that they care much more about the price attached to the bounty than the bounty itself. You pay them enough, and they bring you back Leia and a basis for your new cantina band. You know, an episode of a sci-fi show is paced poorly when I have to wonder if I'm in a repeating time loop story and I find myself reusing the same jokes. Also, this is the third time for this, and yet the show refuses to play any Sonny and Cher or go full Womp Rat Day. Sorry, forgot. Here on Tatooine, the artist is Sonny and Sonny, of course. Can you want tiny? Children's toys that come equipped with buzz saws. Honestly, at this point, just rename the franchise Star Traversing Slowly Through Deserts in the Occasional Wars. You needed a shovel for something buried less than a foot deep in the loose sand? Not only could you have just reached in there and grabbed that, you're lucky the wind didn't expose it within the first few days of being under there. Well, you're coming or not? Title of my Star Wars sex tape? <laughs> Casually flashing your lightsaber in public when it could get you arrested or even killed. You know who we are. A sentence immediately contradicted by making us sit through another previously on. You're in Dai Yu now. All signals in or out are blocked. The well-traveled and experienced Jedi Knight does not already know this. Considering Obi-Wan should be trying to keep a low profile, I find his choice of slightly dusty Jedi Knight disguise disturbing. I absolutely love this shot and think everyone involved in the production design of this show deserves a ton of praise. But if you do an image search on the interwebs for Sci-Fi City, about 90% of the results look something like this. So despite my personal feelings, I must award the appropriate number of sins for a Sci-Fi Cityscape looks like an urban neon dream cliche. Also, there may actually be a good chance this was pulled from Google Images, since this sign here is turned on its side and repeated here, and then this sign here seems to be a mirror image of this sign here. And don't tell me it doesn't matter and that I'm the only one lame enough to pay attention to this sh because that just might be true and I am not ready to reassess how I'm spending my life. Spare any credits. Okay, the fact that this retired clone trooper is played by Tamura Morrison is a very nice touch. What? I can say nice things. And trust me, for all its aspirations, this show will not be choking on sin removals. Break it up. Clear path. There are like three people here. I see nothing to break up, nor any obstructions requiring the creation of said path. I got a Kessel Pure. Oh man, I hear Kessel will get you f***ed up for like 12 parsecs. I'm looking for my daughter. Directing this question to a spice dealer only makes sense if Leia is into underground raves. Listen, I get that the Star Wars franchise revolves around one family and the same like 10 people, but that doesn't excuse Obi-Wan from thinking that every criminal knows about all the types of crime. Of course, this overly dramatic de-hooding is entirely for the audience's benefit, but why is he revealing his face at all? Even if he's just pretending to be a Jedi Robin Hood, wouldn't he want to mask his identity as much as possible just in case these lovely people are caught and interrogated? This is a Jedi mind trick. Do not be alarmed. I am inside your mind. This is one of the few times I wish Disney actually would get inside my mind so they could hear me screaming, Stop wasting Kumail Nanjiani! I am Haja Estri, Jedi. I help all who are in need. In return, I ask only a few credits. This must be the riskiest 
fucking hustle to ever hustle. What this scheme boils down to is Kumail non jediani here taking money from vulnerable people to secure them illegal passage off world. So is painting a force shaped target on the back of this scheme while there's an active Jedi hunt going on the safest way to do business? You're a bottom feeder. A rat who preys on weakness. One of my biggest gripes with Star Wars is that some things get fun, fanciful names like Jacko Beast, and other times the writers just settle for things we have on Earth like rats. And don't give me some rationalization about rats being some kind of immutable universal constant because I'll just start giving out sense for everyone speaking English. If it's the sewers you want, there's only one place to go, but you'll never get it. Astri has obviously never tried walking in. What are you doing back here? Darth Maul Cop. I know the whole point is that Obi-Wan's out of practice and not quite in tune with the Force anymore, but it just feels super jarring to see a Jedi in a fist fight. And I swear if a show called Kenobi takes more than three episodes to actually Kenobi, I... I... Well, I guess I'll just have to rewatch the prequels. See what you did, Disney. Stop making me like things that I enjoy hating. I love this little detail of Obi-Wan hurting his hand when he slaps the Zabrakian on his horns. But why is he slapping someone this high up on their head to begin with? I'm surprised you fell for it. Flea would be excellent at TV sins, which is just a bizarre sentence all around. Inquisitor really figured you out. Bad guy exposits plot information to the protagonist because he's a staunch supporter of education. And yes, when the character motivations are thin, I'm just going to add my own details. Where is the girl? She must be close. Doesn't matter. You're not getting out of here. But Kenobi will, of course, get out of here because rather than tie him, it's much more fun to mock Sposit just long enough for him to come up with a way to escape. Well, everybody bleeds. All these fools let him reach into his pockets, hold this jar of spice in front of their faces, and deliver this line because the script told them their plan was foiled and they were to do nothing about it. Thinking any bounty is more important than finishing your barbecue, and that I'm not ready and willing to sin every single time a series has a character leave their meal completely untouched. Here, put this on. Can I try this one instead? Half the city is looking for you. You don't need those. And the gloves. Kids. Seriously, this is gonna be the most kids-worthy scene in the entire history of television. And I've seen Stranger Things. Don't smell anything. Don't look at anything. Don't touch anything. The Kindergarten Jedi portion of the episode goes on for all the unoriginal who the f*** asked for this amount of some time. I read that Jedi can make things float. Make me float. What? I wanna float. Foreshadowing. I let your parents know you're safe. So we're just gonna forget about the whole... You're in die, you know. All signals in or out are blocked. Can't even blame it on the plot because Obi-Wan updating Leia's parents doesn't really change a damn thing. Look, it's one thing to not be consistent with the wider Star Wars universe, but to contradict yourself inside your own 30-minute episode is downright impressive. That's what you were hiding. You're the reason I'm here. They took me to get to you. My goodness, in the name of Yoda, the Jedi, and Qui-Gon's Force Ghost, was that a leap? Why wouldn't Leia just assume that they'd been spotted escaping and that's why his face was everywhere? How'd she manage to immediately jump to the plot synopsis? This is the second time in the series that Leia's eluded an adult using this unimpressive running pace. It's like the show wants us to believe that a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, knees didn't evolve in a way that allowed grown-ups to use the maximum length of their stride. Stop! This Gorn trooper inexplicably does stop long enough to allow Leia to get out of the way and then also manages to miss Obi-Wan despite him being in wide open air. This rooftop running sequence was actually pretty cool. The only thing cooler would have been if the writers let Reva actually catch up to Obi-Wan during the chase, so that all the gratuitous parkouring could have been relevant to the story. Dual wielding blasters, but only shooting one at a time. Also, shooting your dual blasters in two very different directions when your target is remaining in the same spot. I'm not gonna stand here and say this doesn't look cool, but I will stand here and ask why it was any better than just jumping over the damn thing. None of the four stormtroopers or dozens of passing people break a stride after this very loud pew pew and the resulting noise made by the six feet of tumbling metal. Since I met you, I've been chased, shot at, I almost fell to my death, and now there are inquisiting people after us. If somebody is offering us help, I think we should take it. Most of this happened because of her unwillingness to trust Obi-Wan, who was also offering help at the time. So the sin is that Ben sees a leader instead of misguided optimism. Was your friend a Jedi too? No, she was a leader. Leia's entire character being built off of who she will become and who Padme was may be in line with all the themes of destiny running through Star Wars, but it also eliminates pretty much any stakes for her story. Obi-Wan. Yes, here we go. Okay, I suppose two episodes isn't too long to wait to see Obi-Wan rock that blue stick of Jedi justice. Let's go! Watch and learn. Stabbing your GI in his GI. Can't bring Obi-Wan! 
Writers think this is a good enough explanation for why Obi-Wan couldn't catch Leia earlier in the episode. We will destroy you! Since the time and place of said destruction are already known to most viewers, this threat carries very little weight. And if this is news to you, go watch the original trilogy, you heathen! The look on my face after realizing this season will not be an original story, but mostly tie-ins to the original trilogy, somehow makes it into the episode. Look, mock all you want, but no one wears seven layers of cosmetic alterations like Hayden Christensen. And there is no one else in the entire world that would have been able to play the parts of Vader that matter most but also don't require James Earl Jones. Considering the huge amounts of f all that happened in the first two episodes, filling a one minute and 30 second recap is actually quite impressive. Running between a giant polar sloth's legs without consent. Creating your vanity intro to only include helmets or droids. Which means you end up including an MSE 6 repair droid instead of a Han Solo. This Darth Vader gets dressed while Obi-Wan prays to the cameo voices on high segment goes on for all the some time. Wait, I'm confused. Everything we've seen before shows the helmet and faceplate as two distinct parts that need to be placed on in order. The faceplate hinges on the mouthpiece and then the helmet seals it all into the compression chamber. And don't give me any crap about them changing to a new suit because they would have had to change back by the time Luke removes it later at his death. This isn't a new Coke situation. It's a continuity error. Look, edging is great, or so I've been told, but there comes a point when heavy breathing alone loses its impact and you just need to release the red stick of doom. Modeling your evil lair after Mordor Middle Earth. I have been watching you, third sister. It's so great to have James Earl Jones back for this. Hang on, I need to adjust a few things here. Mm -hmm, listen, mm -hmm, yep. Mm. Okay. It's so great to have the digitally recreated and disembodied voice harnessed outside of its original owner with no human performance and ruthlessly mined to generate dollars for a soulless corporation back for this. Are we almost there? Kid asks an adult, are we there yet in a transportation situation? Cliche. Can't you use force on it or something? That's not how it works. I mean, it could though, right? If I know one thing about Star Wars, the force can be used to do the exact things the story needs it to, but then also won't do the exact things the story needs it not to. So really, Obi-Wan, just use a Jedi mind trick on the writers and you should be good to go. Have you ever been afraid of the dark? How does it feel when you turn on the light? I feel safe. Comparing the mystical galactic weave that provides superpowers to both good and evil to a nightlight. Lola! She was a show droid with red accents on her flare and seven lives or so to spare. You hear that sound? It's as if millions of zippers simultaneously unzipped in ecstasy because yet another Star Wars spaceship takeoff or landing has been shown in its mind-meltingly slow entirety. Phew! We traded the sand deserts to Tatooine for something completely different. A dusty desert. What is this place? Mapuzo. It's a mining system. Writing dialogue into your show for the sole purpose of Wikipedia. Look at all this headroom. This is a ton of wasted space. Why are there so many stormtroopers just aimlessly patrolling? <laughs> Aimlessly. He could be anywhere. I traced the manifest. Oh, you traced the manifest, did you? Cool. So should I send this for such a generic tactic explanation or send it for Obi-Wan being able to be followed because of such a generic tactic explanation? Eh, just throw a sin on and let the comments fall where they may. And when the sea metronome is fully mature, it will spread its seed to the other planets so that a new generation of aquatic melodic timing devices can populate the galaxy. At least I assume that's what's happening here, considering we're spending all this time on it. You don't talk. Got it. I feel, rather frustratingly, that she will very quickly prove that she doesn't, in fact, got it. Maybe they're just late? Maybe it was a lie. Knew it. I never should have trusted him. We don't know if maybe... No one is coming here, Leia. Man, Obi-Wan sure did turn into a condescending cynical prick over the last ten years, didn't he? He reprimands Leia's optimism so quickly and forcefully here that he might as well have threatened her with a timeout if she dared say anything else even the slightest bit hopeful. Also, as shown at the end of the episode, Obi-Wan gives up way too quickly on this meeting. I mean, it's not like they had a set time of departure from Space Vegas or a set arrival time on slightly greener Tatooine, so how does anyone know when the actual meeting time is supposed to be? And if it's a trap, wouldn't they have been caught as soon as they turned up? What are you doing? Maybe they can give us a ride to the spaceport. But it's not safe. Then stop her. My goodness, man, if you truly believe this is too dangerous, then stop letting the 10-year-old make all the decisions. Especially since what sounds like Zach Braff doing a Seth Rogen impersonation here does give them up to the stormtroopers. Father, aren't you going to say hello? Hello? There. Come on, you were dying for him to say it too. They're moving us around. 
Looking for a Jedi. I can't believe that in the last 10 years, Obi-Wan, the most famous living Jedi, doesn't have one of the most recognizable faces in the galaxy. Especially to stormtroopers hunting a Jedi. What are you doing out here? That's a long story. It's a long way. The stormtrooper version of a long way is apparently a 1 minute and 15 second journey. Good to know. They know what they're doing, Leia. I can sort of go with Obi-Wan has lost touch with the Force, or Obi-Wan is getting older and his skills are diminishing. But I'm not sure I can get on board with Obi-Wan in a moment of crucial conversation when he should be on high alert, calls his undercover daughter by her actual name, as if he's some third-rate criminal in an episode of NCIS. Are you my real father? I wish I could say I was. Weird time to tell Leia he regrets missing the opportunity to bang her mom, but okay. I remember a baby. A baby? Yes, I think I had a brother. Coming soon to a Disney Plus near you. Obi to Kenobi. A story so important you won't believe how little you care about Star Wars anymore. A couple of strays I found. Thought you might want to check them out. No! Not Freck! Betrayed by the only one! Betrayed by someone so... Betrayed by... By... Who was Freck again? Initiate protocol 23. No, not Protocol 23! How will they stop the, the- when the troopers do the, the- what will happen when- when- what was Protocol 23 again? Ah! Holy sh! that Stormtrooper just got cut in half! Bisected Stormtroopers, the new Titanic propeller guy, and I demand merch! Also, despite having the high ground that Obi-Wan is so fond of, this Stormtrooper won't join in on the fight until all of his friends are dead. <laughs> Surely shooting the control panel only works if the control panel is also the power source for the barrier. This is like me smashing my keyboard and expecting my PC to turn off. Also, would it have really been so hard to walk around it? Out of the way. He says to the person who is no longer in the way, so the audience will know he's a dick. You know, in case the fact that he's a stormtrooper didn't tip you off to that possibility. Quick, another adult is kneeling to talk with Leia. Emotional conversation is incoming. Skip now. It is not wise to upset a sinny. Droid maintenance. It's all automated. No one ever comes in here. Which means that when anyone sees you go in there, it's probably suspicious, no? Next time pick a hideout where you won't be found out just by walking through the front door, maybe? He's just a loader. They don't allow them to communicate. But what if he has something to say? Actions speak louder than words. So that would be communicating, then. Quinlan was here. Quinlan, you say, as if I'm supposed to have watched every single Star Wars thing and know that name and be very excited. Which, of course, I have, because I'm totally as big of a Star Wars fan as you are, and I'm well aware of how that one time, when Quinlan did that one thing... Hey, question, why are the Jedi writing their names on the wall? Like some sort of Jedi database in case his room is ever discovered? What does it say? Only when the eyes are closed. Can you truly see? That's actually only the first line. I've read this one on a bathroom stall before. The full poem is, Only when the eyes are closed can you truly see. Because that's when the sense of smell comes, to distinguish from pee. It really ruins the full impact when you cut it short like that, Obi. Someone must have seen us. We're moving up the timeline. Wait, if that was always an option, why wasn't it always the plan? I can't imagine Obi-Wan Kenobi doing anything wrong. Showing a complete lack of imagination. Ben? What is it? He's sensing Darth Anakin, that's what. Because anytime the story needs it, Force users can sense another important Force user around them. But sometimes, when it wouldn't make sense, they just completely miss it. Like, for instance, when you're within a few feet of your own Force-sensitive daughter. Just as one random example. Dude! Vader just Force-snapped a kid's neck for defending his father. I'm super glad this whole saga is about the redemption of this guy. Every move just makes the end of Episode 6 so much more jubilant. Okay, I'm only human, let's do this. Oh, okay, well, I'm sure they're saving the epic battle for the end of the episode. I just hope that it doesn't end up being episode four in New Hope. What have you become? Mostly a villainous trump card for Disney to pull out every time they need to goose their IP interested a bit, if we're being honest. Reva checks the exact building she needs to check, and we're never told why, other than the inquisitive look she gave Discount Bumblebee. The years have made you weak. Wait until you see what the next 10 years does to him. He'll almost look like another person. The thing is on wheels, Reva. There'll be plenty of opportunities to show your powers. You don't have to force it now. Keep running till you reach the port. A pilot will meet you there. She leaves the 10-year-old princess alone. I know Vader's toying with an out-of-practice Obi-Wan, but I've seen more captivating lightsaber battles at the local swimming pool with foam water noodles. Now you will suffer, Obi-Wan.
Anakin and Obi-Wan set each other on fire in episode 3 of a Star Wars property. Cliché. Also, Obi-Wan survives this without needing a life support suit or needing to be voiced by James Earl Jones. <laughs> And despite Darth literally just easily putting the same fire out mere seconds ago, this will offer enough cover for the several minutes Obi-Wan needs to be saved. Are you the one I'm supposed to meet? No, that's Reva, which makes no sense considering she was on the other side of those tunnels and Leia's been clearly shown to be the fastest sprinter in the known galaxy and was running the entire way. Also, my favorite thing is that this show is now basically the shampoo of Star Wars shows. It just keeps wash, rinse, repeating. Episode 1, Leia kidnapped. Episode 2, Leia rescued. Episode 3, Leia kidnapped. I hope it just goes on like this for another 20 episodes. So we really hammer home the point that Leia's defining characteristic is just continuously being in peril. If Disney truly thinks we need almost 90 seconds of recapping at the beginning of every episode to help the new episode make sense, I really have to ask why they didn't just release this as a movie. Get the back to time right Ah, the back to tank. I should have guessed. Does all the heavy lifting so the writers don't have to deal with the consequences of physically f***ing up the protagonist. And the audience doesn't have to give a sh when they see someone injured. Also, this all seems a bit overdramatic. Doesn't this franchise usually just have people recuperating on an uncomfortable looking bed in sickbay? Don't, don't! Expecting someone who has just woken up in a vat of liquid not to freak out. Oh, it's Leia. TV show completely skips Obi-Wan losing his shirt with Tala for leaving Leia behind and allowing her to be kidnapped by the bad guys. He should be f***ing furious right now. We don't even see the mildest of forced jokings. You can't keep me here. My father is Bail Organa. He's a senator. Writers think that the Leia we all know and love would be throwing around this do you know who my father is cliche. I am a princess of Alderaan. Kids. She knows everything. Telling secrets to a child. Ever. You've no idea what the Empire is capable of. Of course Rokin knows what the Empire is capable of. What does Obi-Wan think he's doing here? Digging for fossils? That could be the most ignorant sh** I've heard out of anyone in the Star Wars universe. And it came from Obi-Wan. Now, fortunately, Rokin sets him straight. But unfortunately, that just means this was a setup to force feed us Rokin's motivations. Great, but why at the expense of Obi-Wan? What the f*** is this show doing to Obi-Wan Kenobi? I had a wife once. But also, skip. Look, if you want my help, you got it. Obi-Wan being a dick works. So that's it. Fortress Inquisitorius. I don't care if it's pulled from a comic or video game or whatever. Fortress Inquisitorius still follows the make it sound vaguely Latin school of naming things and it sounds dumb as heck. There, I said it. Dumb as heck. Inquisit me if you must. It's impenetrable, Wade. It will, of course, prove to be extremely penetrable. Truth is, nobody knows what it looks like in there. So what is the point of this fancy hologram if it has zero information to share? It's not even red. I don't see any shields. That's because no one would be stupid enough to attack them. Yes, but the only thing dumber than that is not equipping the place with shields because you assume no one is dumb enough to attack it. We need to find a way inside. Oh, well, we're not soldiers. Those speeders are for hauling sewage. She's 10 years old. Thinking that the age of the child you're rescuing will change the core function of your speeders or the ability of those riding them. Also, we need a Dirty Jobs episode on how they're hauling sewage in these things, because right now I'm guessing the back seat, and that's definitely a sin. I can get you inside and I can get you access. Is your cover still intact? We'll find out soon enough. I know they have limited options, but this is not a plan. This is like me pulling out a 10 year old condom and assuming it won't immediately explode. My best friend and I play a game of Kerspunk. Kerspunk is a game where we fill a condom with jello and then throw it at each other until it bursts, and then the person who threw it gets to shout, Kerspunk! Wait, what do you use condoms for? We're wasting time. Yep. The past is a hard thing to forget, and you just need time, that's all. Yes, I hear the first 10 years post failing to prevent the murder of all your Jedi friends and younglings is all about denial, and it's the following 10 where the real healing starts. I need to find out where they are. Well, I can't say for sure that the writers momentarily thought it would be awesome if this episode had Reva use her cool-looking lightsaber in a showdown with Obi-Wan. I can confirm they chose to have her character interrogate a child for most of the episode instead. Thinking that this show needed the largest and coolest version of that thing at the airport that lets the TSA agent get a good look at your package. And yes, whichever package you're thinking of, I'm talking about the other one. Perhaps I should just inform the Grand Inquisitor of your insolence. Allowing your vigilance to be confused with insolence by an abundance of confidence. All right, I'm inside the system. Here we go. Just to recap here, the impenetrable fortress consists of a wide open hangar and one incompetent guard that doesn't feel the need to challenge a suspicious visitor. It's about as impenetrable as a 10 year old condom filled with jello being thrown. You get the idea. Obi Pran Kenobi. Ben, I'm overriding an entry port. Oh, well, Lisa wasn't a fing exhaust port this time. Nope, that's not a sin removal. That's me adding an extra sin for the original trilogy. Obi-Wan Episode 4 misses the opportunity to pull a Star Wars Episode 4 by not disguising Obi-Wan as a stormtrooper. 
Also, why doesn't he disguise himself as a stormtrooper? <laughs> what the f*** was Lola's plan here? Adorable her to death? What are they keeping down there? Nobody within earshot, including this f***ing guy who we know heard her does f*** all about this. Just keep heading north. Giving directions like this indoors. A galaxy far, far away with laser swords, faster than light travel, planet killing space stations, but no concept of 360 degree cameras. And why would this droid look through the windows and not just open the door? And how is its supervisor putting up with this kind of laziness? Either everyone stepped out for lunch while this was happening, or the generic evil officer here was a real dick to his employees, and they're all quite happy to go about their work to the tune of him getting his ass kicked. Ben. Did you hear that? Over there. Let's go. Good to know that the stormtroopers have a pre-agreed hierarchy when it comes to suspicious noises, and that generic thuds in the distance rank above unexplained radio comms. I think I just found the secure sector. <laughs> because the f***ing door decals are red? The only thing dumber than Obi-Wan assuming this is the fact that he's right. This place isn't a fortress, it's a tomb. Thinking your Jedi will increase in value if you don't take them out of the packaging. What are you doing to the me? The same thing I'd do to anyone who doesn't embrace the Empire. Not giving the person you're about to encase in amber the courtesy of a clear and honest answer. Wait. No, not giving the viewer the courtesy of a clear and honest answer because I'm just assuming you're doing to her what we just saw Obi-Wan looking at. But for all we know, this device could be for root canals or making cotton candy. This is your last chance, Leia. Except we all know it isn't. The music, the dialogue, the acting, everything is supposed to make me feel some kind of suspense. But that's a tall order when I know Disney, thankfully, would never show a child being tortured. And we already know Leia survives this. Tala, I need a distraction. I was happened? Just do it now. And this request is so vague that it raises a serious question about how Tala managed to come up with the appropriate distraction. She could have just stood on the desk and began singing Jiggle Jiggle, and I'm sure everyone in the room would have been distracted, but it wouldn't have been the least bit helpful for Leia's situation. Unless, of course, you're lying. Reva's rightfully skeptical, but wastes a bunch of time on questions instead of immediately doing the thing where she force pulls the information out of your mind. I guess it would have been convenient for her, but inconvenient for the plot. <laughs> Yes! Finally, the kid is back! The return of the mother-forcing Jedi! But the writers made us wait till episode 4. So... Apparently the secret droid speed is set to slightly slower than a child. Like most of the bad guys in this show. It's official. Stormtrooper helmets cause more harm than good. Tala slaps this guy in the head and it completely takes him out of the game. I'm beginning to wonder if they're actually just plastic shells with an array of spikes on the inside. It's not just that this works. It's also that despite his dip in the ocean earlier, he hasn't been tracking water all over the base. So the real sin is that none of the water in this episode is working properly. I want the base shut down now! I want your character to do more than just walk around being angry all the time, but we don't always get what we want. <laughs> There's no... <laughs> he is not... <laughs> oh my goodness, he's, he's hiding her under a f***ing overcoat? Look at her little red boots walking alongside him. Oh my, she peeks out? And none of these dozens of people notice this discount Vincent Adultman just walking around. This is how Scooby-Doo would have f***ing escaped. What is going on here? Every stormtrooper in the hangar has their blaster trained on these three, and this guy just cuts through the situation like, pardon me, excuses me, uh, late for a meeting. I'll admit it, I laughed when Tala shot the little mouse droid, but considering the tone of the rest of this episode, I have no idea if this was a joke or if the little guy actually posed a threat. Come on, show. Pick a path. Destroy them! Fifth Brother says this while also not doing any destroying. Wade! Wade. Obi-Wan episode ends with Reva staring at Obi-Wan on an escaping ship cliche. Where's Wade? Okay, fine. I'll go watch all of Star Wars Clone Wars and Rebels so I can feel the impact of Wade's death better. I'm sure he appears somewhere in those 208 episodes, right? Right? Penis buildings. Are they training... Are they training with actual lightsabers? Did they set sabers to stun? This just seems insanely dangerous. I get that the Empire's design philosophy is primarily based around intimidation, but how does intimidating your own workers with fall hazards help with all the star destroying? We got her. Show has everyone waiting around with bated breath as if she's already a leader in the Rebel Alliance. So I'll remind you that the concern around Leia's fate has to do with her detailed knowledge of the path and not necessarily her well-being. And I know this because not a single one of these assholes asks about Wade. Haja. What are you doing here? The writer's internal monologue regarding why Haja is in this episode somehow makes it into the show. We used a no trade route to get them out, but the window's closing. We held it to help you get the kid. We only have a few hours. 
If this was such a timely need, then seems like he could have explained this to Ben on the trip here. Might have even been able to formulate some sort of plan, so once you landed, you were ready to get everyone off in that small window of time. But as Josh Mankiewicz would say, if he were writing for TV Sins, but you didn't do that, did you? If we seal them in now, they can hold out for days. Oh no, not days! Impatience may be a virtue of the dark side, but it makes for a very dull character motivation. Obi-Wan is moved to action by this conveniently placed Jedi paraphernalia, instead of being suspicious about the owner of this extensive collection of lightsabers. He isn't the patience for siege. How do you know? Whenever I run into my siblings, I also flash back to a fight to the almost death. But that doesn't excuse the absurd fact that this one singular sparring match somehow manages to be the perfect analogy for every event that occurs in this episode. But we do not need to fight them. We just need to hold them off long enough to get you all out. And by hold them off, you mean fight them, right? Roken, how much time do you need to override the doors? Three, four hours. You have one. Did Ben just pull a Captain Kirk on Roken? Did he just Scotty Roken? I think he just Scottied all over Roken. Show us over a minute of runtime on this rushing about an overly dramatic preparation in an attempt to get us invested in this standoff and hoping we wouldn't notice that the Rebels plan hinges on the Empire with its endless supply of red shirts only attacking one of the two known doors. And spoiler alert, this works. The Empire sees a big ass door on the roof that happens to be the size of a spaceship and not even Vader himself thinks to send a ship, a stormtrooper, or even a droid to check it out and maybe wait there in case they try to use it. That was underwhelming. Haja could be my Padawan at TV Sins. I'm a little too big to be crawling around in the vents. Would you like to try? I'm going to need a ladder. Going out of your way to create obstacles that only Leia can overcome doesn't change the fact that her character was the worst idea this show had. And to be clear, Vivian Lyra Blair is very charming and makes her role work better than it should, but we're still stuck with an Obi-Wan helps protect a kid cliche. And that kind of sucks. Do as she asks. You trust me? I trust her. Obi-Wan acts as if this is a matter of trust and not a question about whether Leia has the required electrical engineering knowledge to complete the task. I am not a babysitter, Ben. I have to go. Forcing someone to babysit your child, or any child you're in charge of looking after. Not cool, Ben. Not f***ing cool. I'm not sure if two incidents make a cliche, but it's super f***ing weird both this show and Mandalorian have a plotline that requires the smallest character to venture into a space full of wires that they have to f*** with. If he's found you, if he's learned of the children. But once again, how does Vader not know about the children? One's living with his uncle without a name change, and one's in a royal family making daily public appearances. This show has made Darth Vader so much less intimidating and so much more stupid. Why did you do that, Obi-Wan? I can assure you, we no longer need your help. If I don't hear from you soon, I'll head to Tatooine. I'm surprised you're not already there. Based on the movies and all the shows so far, everyone ends up at Tatooine eventually. You know, I was following orders on Gorel. Fourteen people died and six of them were children, and I couldn't do anything to help them. So now I do this. You pull your gun out of your holster? You're right, Ben. Some things you can't forget. Like this show? Oh, who am I kidding? I forget about this show as soon as the credits start. If this is you stalling for time, it won't work. Well, we still end up with one more episode, so... If Reva could have done this the whole time, then what was she waiting for? You're telling me the standoff couldn't have been over five minutes ago? F*** you, show, and the horses you stop and look at for ten minutes before riding in on. Looking at this wall of stormtroopers, I find it completely unbelievable that Obi and his band of misfits have missed a single shot. I thought the only place they taught this kind of marksmanship was the Stormtrooper Academy. <laughs> But still, Roken survives running around in the middle of the crossfire. Despite the interesting fight going on in the background, let's just focus on this guy swinging a pipe at blaster fire. Show pew pews on for all the never ending how are they gonna get out of this one cliche. Expecting us to believe a stormtrooper hit something he or she was aiming at, and on behalf of humanity, I will exclaim with a resounding cry, we do not believe you. Writers give Ned B the Wade treatment. I'll assume at least half of you said who? And the answer is yes. Leia, are you close? <sighs> Interrupting your protagonist as he deals with death to briefly revisit your strange comedic child fixes a garage door B plot. It's over. This kicks off the most confusing exchange of dialogue in the entire series where Roken tries to convince Obi-Wan not to quit and Obi-Wan tries to convince Roken that he's not quitting, meaning they're on the same page the entire time and the whole thing was unnecessary and overdramatic. You want to tell me how you're going to fight without a weapon? There are other ways to fight. So... no then? This isn't over yet. What? The episode? Yeah, we know. 
again, I have to point out that this lightsaber practice really feels like they're trying to lightly kill each other. So it'd go a long way if the show could indicate whether or not these things are nerf, or if these two are oddly okay with being cut in half. Lola, what are you doing in here? I made a joke about this previously, so it's completely uncanny that Lola actually tries to adorable Leia to death here. Also, the show never acknowledges that Leia's the one that brought Lola along on this adventure, which makes it her fault all these people just died in that blaster fight. Seriously, lots of casualties on both sides. All Leia's fault. Well, that was anticlimactic. Also, if evil Lola planned to stop Leia from opening the roof, then why did it wait till she found the spot she needed to reopen the roof? Let's get to the transport, people! The plan was to leave as soon as possible, right? So why are all these people not already on the transport? This is cool, but not as cool as Starkiller pulling down a Star Destroyer, so points will be deducted accordingly. Neat trick, but couldn't Vader just have easily stopped the second ship by using the force as well? Was he too tired? Did he need some orange slices? How does Anakin not stop this with some quick stabby stab action? Show wants me to believe that a weaponless Obi twice armed with only breakdance moves is a match for Darth Vader and his lightsaber. So Bob, are you telling me Vader's finally gonna get to where Ben is in this episode? Man, that sounds exciting. What are you gonna have him do? I don't know, Stan. I figured we'd have him stare a lot at the end. People really love to see other people behind masks staring into the distance. We've done focus groups on it and everything. Seems like Vader saw this coming for a while now, but still Reva certainly didn't help her cause by loudly grunting and deploying her saber at the moment of attack, completely undermining all her sneaking. There are two things I know for sure about this sequence. One is that Vader has his back to Reva twice and doesn't get stabbed. The other is if you freeze the frame at exactly the right moment, it looks like Vader's penis and butthole both have lightsabers coming out of them. Your rage was useful. Was it though? Because they're still no closer to having Kenobi or Leia. I know they're saving the chase for the next episode, but this transport ship flying off with no resistance from the Star Destroyer in orbit is all kinds of the nonsense. A hyperdrive is down. Story got a story, even when it's a contrivance. Guess it wouldn't be a Star Wars series if we didn't go back to the fucking desert. Revenge does wonders for the will to live, don't you think? Yeah, it's crazy how successful it is at keeping people alive in this franchise. I hear in Star Wars Medical School, they teach that for all terminal diagnoses, doctors should make a choice between killing one of the patient's family members or writing a prescription to have someone kick the patient's pet dog. You'd be surprised how many choose door number one. Show literally starts on just a picture of sand as if it's taunting me. I feel like the kid in Jurassic Park after the Jeep chased him down the tree. Except in this case, the Jeep is Tatooine. And now we're back in the sand again. For a planet where water is a commodity, he sure is pouring that carelessly. Something you want to say? Remember him? He's the bully from a few episodes back. The one that was a dick to that one guy when Obi-Wan did nothing about it. Bet you haven't been able to sleep at night wondering what happened to him and if he'll ever be brought to justice. Well, here you are, people. Don't ever say Star Wars isn't giving you what you want. I didn't have to do much research to figure out that Star Destroyers come equipped with a huge hangar filled with TIE fighters that Vader is inexplicably choosing to not utilize in this chase. Upon further research, I found out that Star Destroyers can actually carry a whopping 48 TIE Fighters. So I think you can guess how many sins are about to be awarded. Hyperdrive's almost ready. Ah yes, the non-functioning hyperdrive. Or as they call it in the Star Wars writer's room, the plot Jesus. How much time do you need? More than we have. Look, that's a non-answer, which I guess is fine, except that both parties just pretend the question is settled. Obi should have responded with, no, seriously, I'm brainstorming solutions here. Give me a ballpark figure so I can at least explore some options. But instead he's all, cool bro, thanks for the witty retort. I'm just gonna be over here aimlessly wandering around and wistfully looking at all these innocents if you wanna follow up here in a skoosh. Adult kneels in front of Leia for a profound conversation and we skip it because we hate sentimentality. Cliché. But we're so close. Then maybe you should have said that when Obi-Wan asked you about it five minutes ago. You are all the future. You are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. I decided long ago never to work in anyone's shadow. If I fail, if I succeed, you can You have my word. Although I know the word of a liar and a... Fake Jedi I may not mean much to you. Haja would be one with the Force at TV Sins. It's good enough for me. Sadly, Obi-Wan's chief character trait in this series is a proclivity for leaving Leia with strangers and then wondering why she keeps going missing. How did she know it was here? I don't know. All I know is she's coming. 
oh, oh, I can help. See, the show needed something for Reva to do after the completion of her main story motivation, so it provided her with a convenient message, leading her directly here for more Sandy hijinks, because they didn't think the episode could survive with just the single thread of the Vader Kenobi stuff. It's the whole modern thing where climaxes can't just be about one thing anymore, and has to intercut between at least two and as many as five things, because audiences are used to TikTok, where the attention spans don't just jiggle jiggle, they fold. So anyhow, what, what was the question again? We're enough. You and me. They are not. She'll come when the suns go down. Best we got position now. Of course it will be after sundown because somehow Reeve is aware that all 21st century TV shows have to be set in the near pitch f***ing dark in order to be enjoyed. Why is everything so dark? I blame the clouds. Get off my lawn. I have something for you. Adult kneels in front of Leia for a profound conversation and we skip it because we hate sentimentality cliche. Um, cliche? Broken found it before we got out. She would have wanted you to have it. Given the choice, I think what Tala would have actually wanted was a throwable grenade so that she didn't have to needlessly sacrifice herself. Also, wait, how the hell did Roken manage to find it intact? Wasn't Tala wearing it when she redecorated that cavern? Well, I wasn't gonna give you a blaster layer. You're 10 years old. Don't you get all cocky, kid. You may think that's ridiculous, but this is like Big League Chew all over again. Give a kid shredded gum that looks like chewing tobacco and then pretend that doesn't have some sort of formative effect on them when they eventually decide to mainline nicotine through their gums. This would be like Obi-Wan giving Leia a bong and then getting all high and mighty about not giving her some OG kush to go with it. He sure does lounge around pondering things a lot for someone trying to save a shipload of people who somehow still haven't been blown apart by a freaking Star Destroyer. Whether he dies or I do, this ends today. It will not. And I can say this without even seeing the rest of the episode because guess what? We've known how this feud ends since 1977. Why are we trying to build any sort of tension for this battle? Let's enjoy it for what it f***ing is. A chance to see Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan dueling fates with Darth Vader. Stop trying to trick us into believing there are any actual stakes here. You don't have to do this, you know. Poor Roken. His character's defined by constantly trying to stop Obi-Wan from doing something he's already decided he's going to do, armed with nothing but the thinnest of overused platitudes. People follow you. Don't stop. Just get started. This setup for a Disney Plus spinoff was so blatant they might as well just froze the frame on his smile and put the words coming soon to Disney Plus on the screen. Coming fall 2023. Roken's an undercover mechanic secretly working for the rebellion in Roken Hearted. You can't fix what isn't Roken. Now is our chance to wipe out this network in its entirety. We cannot prioritize one lone Jedi. I mean, he makes an excellent point. Why can't Vader chase down the wounded rebel ship and then hunt down Obi-Wan? He knows Obi-Wan plans to distract him from the rebel ship, so wouldn't it demoralize Obi-Wan even more to know that he'd failed and essentially abandoned his friends to die? Also, you could just launch the f***ing TIE Fighters. The Tuscans are on the hunt again. They're raiding farms along the waste. That's racist. Did Book of Boba Fett teach us nothing? Don't answer that. Prepare my ship. I will face him alone. Because my hubris lines up nicely with the need for a cinematic showdown. Coming spring 2024 to Disney Plus. Lola infiltrates the Empire and destroys them one ship at a time in Droid Where Prohibited. Have you come to destroy me, Obi-Wan? I will do what I must. <laughs> he did the thing! He did the thing! Yes! Get it, Obi-Wan! F*** him up! This is so freaking cool. And it's so good to finally see an extended light, so for f sake, what are we doing back here? I don't know if I want to complain that Owen and Beru somehow can't even hit her when they have the element of surprise and the high ground, or if I'd rather complain about the fact that Reva literally took a lightsaber to the gut a few minutes ago, so really where's the tension with this puny blaster fire? Oh right, I'm me. I get to complain about both. Did you truly think that you could defeat me? You have failed, master. Masturbating. <laughs> Go! What? Why isn't he f***ing gone already? Baru knew that Owen defeating Reva was as likely as a Star Wars show not visiting Tatooine, so why wasn't Luke already out of there as soon as she heard them fighting? Even the rocks in action movies suffer from one at a time itis. Wait, why is Obi-Wan continually hitting him with the butt of his lightsaber? Once or twice is fine, but if he has time to repeatedly do this, then he has time to slice Vader in half. Unless he's been pulling his punches slash swings this whole time, but that makes even less sense. I'm sorry, Anakin. I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. 
This moment alone is almost worth the five episodes of mediocrity we had to endure to get it. McGregor really gives us the catharsis of Obi-Wan finally finding a way to forgive himself. And the fact that that release comes unintentionally from Anakin himself, it's a beautiful book into their relationship as master and apprentice. Strike me down if you will, but I'll come back stronger and still remove a sin. And my friend is truly dead. Cool, so you're gonna kill this abhorrent, dangerous, and genocidal being that's not your friend, right? I swear the defining characteristic of these two's relationship is their inexplicable need to leave each other alive for the next battle. Where's the Mortal Kombat announcer when you need him? Guys, she's gonna kill Luke! Oh no! I can't look! Tell me when it's over because I'm so scared! That this pointless exercise will never be over. I'll look in the dune sea. We'll search till we find him. <laughs> this is the equivalent of Obi-Wan saying, I'll search the Sahara Desert for him, and then leaving on foot instead of using the f***ing spaceship he just landed in and looking out the window. Have I become him? No. <laughs> Who you become now? That is up to you. Coming fall 2024 to Disney+. Plus. A former youngling gets inquisitive about what's next in life in... Revamped. She's literally Vader without the D. Will people please stop leaving their deadly death sticks in the middle of a f***ing desert to be found by any passing child, Jawa, or Tusken? I serve only you, my master. And cue the inevitable Imperial March theme. If Disney has a strategy document for Star Wars, I wouldn't be surprised if it was literally titled Playing the Hits, giving the fans what they think they want without trusting that what they may actually want is something original with just a light sprinkling of nostalgia. Yeah, it's a bit lengthy, but it's printed on A1 size paper for everyone in the back row. Combing your already perfectly braided hair. Lola! Kids. So, is the whole being the most recognizable Jedi in the galaxy thing not a problem anymore? NBA young Obi's just out here like, I ain't scared, come get me. Well, if you ever need my help again, you know where to find me. Let's hope that day never comes. Sir, if your only hope is this vague hope, then may I advise that you perhaps look for a new hope? Leia. Kneeling to Leia's level three times in one episode? It's time for the hype. <laughs> Uh, guys, our hyperskip generator appears to have gone down, and honestly, my motivator's been busted for a while now, so I ain't fixing it. Just, uh, do the normal sin and let's move on. Will I ever see you again? Does Disney milk every IP cow in its barn until the udders fall off? Sorry, was she asking a rhetorical question? I've always wondered what these cubes were supposed to be, or what their function is. I feel like it has something to do with cake. What are you, uh, doing here? Right? I was just saying this. So not only does he go to Alderaan to put Leia in danger, he just heads over to the Skywalker Ranch to make sure Luke's got a target on his back as well. Hello there, Master Qui-Gon. Waiting until the last possible second to take off the last two items on your things that apparently need to happen in an Obi-Wan Kenobi series bingo card. I was always here, Obi-Wan. We just were not ready to see you. Coming as soon as we can convince him to Disney Plus, a former Jedi Master finally gets an offer he can't refuse in Qui-Gon But Not Forgotten. This time, Liam's ready to cash that check. So, what are you trying to say? I don't want to be your friend. Looking for this steamer! <laughs> what? <laughs> You. Something you want to say? It's a sh state of affairs to be in, Tommy, and all the fresh air in the world won't make any f***ing difference. Good soup. I had run for three years, two months, 14 days, and 16 hours. You're late. A wizard is never late. Days in here, days in here. I'm a man who discovered the wheel and built the Eiffel Tower out of metal and brawn. You want my help? Take this. And shove it up your ass. All up in your ass. I'm asking you to leave us alone, Ben. I mean it. Anybody want a peanut? I'm not afraid of you. You will be. You will be. A new, a new life, life awaits you, you in the, the off-world off colony. Oh, hello. I know, right? Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? I'm looking for my daughter, but she was taken, and she's on this planet. Are you my mommy? 
magic. The shadows are my realm for the light. It's an unforgiving place for my kind. Everything that guy just says, bullshit. Who are you? I'm Batman. This guy's not having a good time. He's gonna feel terrible tomorrow morning. Because there's some things in this world that are just wrong, okay? And stealing a princess is one of them. Dinner! Don't let go of that! I'll never let go. You? Choo choo choose me? Oh no, he died! One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor. What's the matter? Oh, I have a headache. It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. There were fields and families. Old man Peabody owned all of this. He had this crazy idea about breeding pine trees. You are not in charge here. You're not the boss of me. Yes, I am. So long, and thanks for all the fish. This is my father, Orden. We're farmers from Tall. Behold the Underminer! I am always beneath you, but nothing is beneath me! Are you my real father? You are not the father! <laughs> oh, son of a... That's gonna leave a mark. It wasn't your fault, Leia. It's not your fault. They don't allow them to communicate. But what if he has something to say? The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. See what? The way. This is the way. Oh, there you are. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Set a course for Earth. Maximum warp. Hear ye, hear ye! Ye old town crier proclaimed crappy by all! Joseph Palmer Simpson, and he shall rock thy world! Light him up! Let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. It's a heavy gun. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? Is everything all right? I wet my bed. <laughs> Hello, third sister. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Fire everything! Howdy. I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Come back. No. He is not just any Jedi. He's a very naughty boy! <laughs> Finish him! Eagle! In City Alpha 5, there was life. A fair chance. This is City Alpha 5! Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Why do you doubt your senses? Because a little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheats. You may be a bit of undigested beef. 